how are you booktube welcome to my channel mh books and welcome to the first uh tbr monthly tbr i've i've done weeklies but monthly tbr i've done in a long long time and with this tbr comes a bit of fun and a bit of a challenge the books on this tbr if i do not read them will be fine i read them some other time um, the books that I do read will count to the number of books I'm allowed to buy in August, not July. July is his birthday month and July is technically I'm fully vaccinated month. And there's no limits to July. Yes. <laughs> but <laughs> on the principle of one in, one out, if I read these books, I am not other books. I will probably read other books instead because I will be doing the moody reader tag and I am a moody reader. I'm also very moody by the way, um, but I'm also a moody reader. <laughs> so I'm moody in a bad way as well, just so you know. <laughs> um, so I am doing this tag. Um, now, today, so this tag. Now, the other thing is, I'm, going, I'm also making it a little bit fun. I was trying to choose my books. And as I chose the books, I tried to make sure I, came, I picked from different things. So I came up with a list of prompts for myself. So this is my prompts for my TBR from, for, for July. This is not a, a tag. This is not a, a readathon. This is just my prompts. <laughs> um, but I just thought like, it's like a little mini readathon just for me. <laughs> and of course, if other people were to choose these prompts, they could, but <laughs> they are very specific to me, to be honest. So shall we just start? Two minutes afterwards. Um, Rick, McDonald did his booktube spin today. I was going to pick a random book off my shelves. I have 1,100 books that are well, slightly more that are owned, <laughs> just slightly more, um, that are owned and to be read on my bookshelves at the moment. I do not have space for them. Um, so I need to read and start to get rid of, rid of books that are already there. So I was going to pick just one randomly um, using Goodreads to select 20 and then using Alexa to pick a number between 1 and 20 like this. Alexa, pick a number between 1 and 20. Your random number between 1 and 20 is 14. That would have been 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. A Woman in Berlin by Anonymous. Oh, I would have read an Anonymous book that was in a tag recently. I didn't have any. Um, but um, as Rick McDonald did his, his um, book to spin uh, a month early, he actually picked two books. So I'm letting him pick two books for my TBR, but my TBR has to be read this month. It's not the book to spin in that way. Um, so I won't give you the numbers just in case you haven't watched the spin yet, because I've already spoiled it by telling you this now too. I'm not telling you which ones they are, so now you can panic. <laughs> Go home and panic. <laughs> You're probably home already. Go, stay home and panic. <laughs> Turn this off quickly. <laughs> what book do you have to read? <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a war and peace. <laughs> um, so the two books that come up from his selections are The Reapers Are the Angels by Alden and Bell. This is a horror dystopian novel um, with zombies. That's all I know. But that sounds good. It has some really good reviews from my friends in, um, on, on Goodreads friends, yeah. And then I have a book that I got originally from the Blind Blind Date with a Book Club. That business is now out of business. They kind of closed down in March 2020. Um, this book came out in June. They decided they'd kind of struggled enough um, with pandemics and things. So, um, this is Ted Chiang's Arrival and its short stories. Very conveniently, I was going to make sure I read either short stories or poetry each month. So it fulfilled the criteria. Yes. And it was a random selection. Yes. Okay. Then other things I'm going to do, my other prompts are, 
I am going to read the oldest books on my TBR. When I started in Goodreads, I just uploaded all the books I had. So they all have the same dates. So I can't remember when they came in. So it's going to be one of those. Um, this one has already appeared. It's 7th July 1976. Therefore, set suitable for July. Though in the heat wave of July 1976, and this weather is horrendous. It is only half four in the afternoon. And look how dark it is. Um, so Maggie O'Farris' instructions to heat wave. Um, seemingly the husband goes off missing now, like, you know, to buy the newspaper. You know that story. That's what it's about during that summer and everybody's driven crazy because of that heat. I love books inside that summer. I have not read any of my Maggie O'Farrell's on my shelf, so this is a really good selection from one of my oldest ones. And it has appeared on my be one of my beach TVRs. You'll probably see it, it appears twice on my Instagram feed in the same photo of it in the beach. So it's smoked to be read this summer. So good one. Um, the next one is the newest one into my shelves, into my house or my apartment and this one came in this morning it's keeping the house um it is an and other stories book it is by tice sin or tc kin she only has four letters in the first name um and three in a, her, her last name and she's almost impossible for me to um, pronounce because i don't know i what she did actually comment <laughs> on my instagram post i should have asked pronunciation of her name when well, I was there um this is not out until September 2021 this is an other stories with subscription if you subscribe to and other stories there's their logo they actually will um give you the books early your name is printed in the back this is just in case you don't know a lot of people already know this but just in case you don't know um they tend to be literary fiction books this one is about three generations of women i believe it's supposed to be fresh and funny according to the back and it's about the hero heroin trade um they're they're making they're in the business of making heroin or or selling it you don't make it i presume they're just distributing importing it in and distributing it because they're set in north london and also they're trying to keep their house and have normal family lives so that's intriguing the book looks it's printed as if it's annotated so there you go let's look see you see the little annotations um i should make a joke about that who wrote in my book maybe somebody did and they just have really neat handwriting um the next category um the categories are in the order of the books that because they collapsed on the bed <laughs> this is fun <laughs> i should sit here more often <laughs> Um, the Prettiest Dark by Carton Nick Sickles. I was looking at um, It's a Sin in January this year. That's a TV program, it's a UK program. It is absolutely phenomenal. I think it's Channel 4. Um, if you haven't seen it, you should. Um, and while I, after I said I have to read more books set in the age during the AIDS pandemic, and I ordered this in January, um, it's the paperback it's huge where's a normal paperback it's a normal well it was instructions for heat wave is a normal paperback so it's huge so it's still a huge paperback i don't understand <laughs> i waited for ages and i thought i was getting a smaller book <laughs> i don't mind getting a bigger book but i thought that's why i had to wait um, i'm not sure why i had to wait <laughs> um probably because I knew I wouldn't get that around to reading it till now anyway and sure it came in in time for Pride Month um so this one is supposed to be heartbreaking um if you've read it and you're heartbroken tell me um please feel free to comment about any of these books you may say that you don't like them as well it is perfectly fine with me I know some people don't like that I don't mind um spoilers not allowed but you're entitled to say you don't like these it won't spoil my reading experience because my, my reading is so different to everybody else's. This is a book, this selection is based on just a book that I randomly selected. Just treat my bookshelves as if they're a library. There's 1,400 books on them. I've read 300. <laughs> um, the others have been on hold or library books. I have actually read about 1,000 books. So I still got more books I own that I haven't read that I have actually read. Um, according to the records i'm sure i've read more books i never recorded um so william s burr's ghost of a chance is an adventure story in madagascar um and it's an environmental tale um 
I chose it because it's been annotated actually by somebody who annotated some things. Of course, you never find their annotations when um, you're trying to do it. But it's also got um, these really unusual images in them. So uh, if I picked it up but randomly, as if my bookshelves were a public library. Um, and it's like, oh, that's interesting. Just borrow that. I'm just borrowing that. Um, this one is not always liked by, by fans of William S. Burris. They think it's not as good as his normal stuff. I've not read any of his normal stuff. And I'm intrigued by those pictures and by the annotations in that book. Another book I picked up is the most recent book that I picked up in Second Hat, okay, uh, rather than the most recent to the door. So the most recent to the door, that second hat. Now it's not actually the most recent because there was 12 of them, um, because I picked up a whole lot, 12 whole books. And didn't bother to do a haul. If you want me to do a haul, I will, but um Secondhand books were kind of random, but this one um, I thought I'd better read sooner than later because I recently did a buddy read with Evie Strange on Taming of the Shrew and this is not a retelling, it's a reworking of Taming of the Shrew. Taming of the Shrew had some problems when we were reading it, um, and but had for me at least the kernel of this brilliant idea. Um, so I have been enthusiastic. I was going to read John Boyne, um, This House is Haunted, but this is also another um, sort of retelling. So I'm going to see what um, John Harding does with um, that story. This is a very convenient location to think because this is where I often put my pile of books that I'm going to read next. Um, another category to make sure I read enough fiction in translation. Um, you will probably notice that some books fit into more than one category, but this is but the, the reason I chose this is it's for my fiction and translation prompt. Um, I don't think it's actually this one happens to be the only one in translation. <laughs> Not a good example. Um, this is Heaven by Mieko Kawakami. Kawakami. Um, Breasts and Eggs is the book I read of hers just quite recently. And if you watch that bit, you see that I really did enjoy that. The first half was, it's, it was written as a novella first and then there, it was extended with the second part added. The first part is far more tight and is far better, better written. I still enjoy the second half, by the way, but the first half is better. Um, so I just saw the most current novella out for her and it actually matches my breast and eggs copy in that this one's yellow, the other one's pink but it's the same copies. Um, so I did actually spend quite a lot of money getting this. Um, it's 20 euros, it's really expensive, but I really did enjoy her book. And um, support your independent bookshop, guys. Um, okay, the next prompt is a book I said I wasn't going to read. <laughs> it's the, the next prompt for me and my personal TV art was why don't you read, just take a nod to one of um, the readathons that are going on in either Twitter, um, Booktube or Instagram. So, I mean, you can't do July, not do Jane Austen July. So I am going to read the Jane Austen July book I said I wasn't going to read. Uh, so Pride and Prejudice um, Jane, by Jane Austen. <laughs> This edition actually has a little bit about Jane Austen in the back. So this is my tip to the, um, just a little knot, a little hat tip to um, the readathons that are going on because I'm not being a very good booktuber and joining the communities very well. Um, the next one I thought I would read is Irish authors concentrating at least two thirds of Irish authors over the, the rest of this year. Um, two thirds, two thirds of the Irish authors should be women um, over the course of this year. This is because men get the literary fiction side of um, Irish writing still a little bit. It's, it's changed a bit over the last couple of years, but it used to be incredibly difficult to find a female author. Um, this is Snowflake by Louise Nealon. Um, it's all actually it's two thirds because I, I do also want to read male voices and other gender voices as well um i just 
it was so difficult until recent years to get um, a female Irish author in any of the literary st styles of fiction. So this is Louise Nealon Snowflake, which is very similar to Sally Rooney's, um, or has Sally Rooney vibes for um, normal people um, because it's a misfit in a university. Um, it's a lovely signed edition too. Um, lots of us have it out. It was a major promotion here. So it needs to be read. Um, I actually managed to get it on Borrow Box as well. So if you're looking for it on Borrow Box, um, the audio version, um, Marco, I, I have it. Sorry. <laughs> I'll finish quick. <laughs> um, a book by or about a person of colour. Um, this is one of the ones that other books here probably fit in that category too, but this one's specifically selected for that purpose. This is supposed to be literary, um, a literary thriller, sort of. Um, I heard about it, I'd already bought it, but, but I heard about it afterwards in Graham Norton's book club. And so it's Akia Dahlia Harris. So she was talking, she was doing an interview with him and seemingly um, she works as a, in the publishing, she, or she worked in the publishing industry and she was the only black woman there and then one day she realized she, the smell of a hair the, hair the hair product for natural um african hair and um, i can't remember the name of it. she realized there was an other black woman in the building and she got so excited about this and then the, the day this story came where what if you were working in a place and another black woman started the, you know you're the only black woman there another one started and you think oh at last i have somebody on my side who understands and they were anything but so you would say has devil wears Prada vibes but um, <laughs> um what's that white woman single or something that movie kind of vaguely reminds me like that in the premise so i don't know and the last book last but not least because we can't have the last one and if anybody ever watched buffy the vampire slayer you would understand that what is truly horrific are bunnies bunnies are the scariest so for the horror one which i will be will be listening in the car the library <laughs> the library thought it was funny like why are you getting the book on cd and as a book are you going to read and listen to it at the same time <laughs> which i do sometimes but no not with the cds this is to listen to the car and to keep up where, which page i'm on and if it's too complicated to listen to the car because it can be some books don't aren't suited to that just to read the book um this is bunny a horror novel which is sounds kind of sweet it's like a misfit who goes to another misfit who goes to college and um i think she's doing her postgraduate work and um there's a click girl so i'll call each other bunny which she doesn't fit into i wonder if they ask her to join but she has she abandons her best friend her best and only friend um, it sounds like oh my gosh <laughs> Um, anything but a horror novel but this seemingly is a horror novel so there you go lads there you go um so that is my tbr um bets on how many i can actually read out of this if i do get half of them done i've been doing well um there is what one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve twelve books i can read twelve books in a month but they tend to be books that I want to read and I just feel like reading on a whim. <laughs> and there's books I haven't finished yet from June. So <laughs> if I can do six, we're probably doing well. So I probably have six books from my August book haul. So <laughs> looking forward to that. <laughs> but the July one's gotta be big. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. Sorry about being so silly. And until next time, have a wonderful weekend. And whatever you're reading, enjoy. And please do take care of yourselves. Bye.